Shalom. Shalom. Hello, hello there. How's everybody doing today? Sorry it's been a little while since we've had our our uh, visit, our time with the Omer, but yes. I've been a little bit sick this week. A little. So <laughs> keep praying for me as I'm trying to get better. And pray I don't get it. Amen, Amen to that. Well, today is day 44, or six weeks and two days of the counting of the Omer. Yes. So let's say this blessing together. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'Mitzvotav, Hitzvanu Al Sefarat HaOmer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by his commandments and commanded us about the counting of the Omer. Amen. Amen, amen. All right, so we are in the midst of this time between Egypt and coming to Mount Sinai. Yes. You know, that's really the pattern that we see for God's redeemed people. We've been redeemed from slavery to Egypt, redeemed from the slavery to sin, mm -hmm. saved uh, and redeemed under the terms of the Abrahamic covenant. And then he leads us as God's people through the waters of baptism. And he takes us even to Mount Sinai, where we are presented essentially with the Mosaic covenant, the Sinai covenant. And we as God's people, as those that have devoted ourselves to him, that's we agree to live by the way that he chooses, he decides for his people. Yes. So here we are. We are in Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. That's where we had finished off. Uh, we're starting the sixth section on the war with Amalek. So I'm going to start reading there in Exodus 17, verse 8. It says, Then the Amalekites came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose men, go out and fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did, as Moses said, and fought the Amalekites, while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. When Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. But when he let down his hand, the Amalekites prevailed. Moses' hand grew heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat down. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on each side, so his hands were steady until the sun went down. And so Joshua overpowered the Amalekites and his army with the edge of the sword. Adonai said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book, and rehearse it in the hearing of Joshua. For I will utterly blot out the memory of the Amalekites from under heaven. And then Moses built an altar and called the name of it Adonai Nisi. Then he said, By the hand upon the throne of Adonai, Adonai will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And that's Adonai Nisi is God is my standard or banner. It also means miracle. Mm -hmm. It's my miracle. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to thinking about that part. Uh, if this is where the whole seed of Moses first comes about. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know, because that's a, that's He's a taking seed. a seed, isn't he? It's the seed yep. of victory. Amen. When they sit there in the seed of Moses, when they're speaking from the place of authority and victory, uh, I wonder if that's uh, any part of that at all. That'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, so here we are. They're fighting the Amalekites, right? They're fighting Amalek. And Amalek was the grandson of Edom. So these are Edomites. Um, they go back to Esau. So these are relatives. Mm -hmm. But these relatives are being very cruel as the, Egypt, or as the Israelites are coming out of Egypt. And so they attack them here at Rephidim. And so Israel has to fight. They've just crossed the Red Sea. You know, they haven't made it to the mountain ago. yet. They're not at the mountain. They're, they're not in the encampment yet at Mount Sinai. And here they are. They're having to fight a battle. So do you remember why <clears throat> when God didn't take them north immediately up into um, the promised land? Right? Because he didn't want them to see war and the results of war. Mm -hmm. Right? But here they're having to fight a battle. A, a battle for the right to exist a battle of self-defense and it is no wonder that what is being compared with um, this event today is the fight in Gaza 
the Amalekites actually lived in the Negev. Mm -hmm. So they're coming out of their way to come fight Israel. Maybe trying so, to expand their own territory maybe. and expand their own influence. Into Midian or some, yeah. something. But they're, they're, they're coming out of their way to fight the Israelites. And this was not a fight that Israel was going and looking for. No, and try, they, they weren't trying to enter the land. No. They weren't trying to go and do anything like that. Perhaps, uh, who was it that uh, when the, the, the tribe that left Egypt early, mm -hmm. they went up that way by the way of the sea? Right, and they got defeated. Ephraim, yes, Ephraim, yes, Ephraim. Uh, Just three years earlier. You right. wonder if any stragglers made it over into Edom, and, and they had to, they heard about another event like that, and they didn't want to fall victim to anything. But whatever it was, they came looking for them. Yeah, sure seems to have. So they're 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 fighting the Amalekites, and Joshua is the one who is leading the fight. Now Moses. Moses is 80 years old. He's not the one out on the battlefield. It's Joshua who's on the battlefield, the one who has been trained by Moses. And of course, according to Josephus, Moses was a military general. So he knew about military tactics and, and strategies. And yet he has removed himself from the battle itself and put himself up on the hill and, hold, and he's holding up his hands with his staff in his hand. It makes no sense militarily or strategically, right? But it gave the Israelites something to look to. And when he puts his hand down and his, his, his rod down, there's nothing for them to look up to you might say, as a, a place to rally, mm -hmm. right? It's when in American history, like with the Revolutionary War, we had uh, flag carriers, and those flag carriers were important because they were the one, the one carrying the flag, that's where your troops went to, right? That's the direction they went. You followed the flag. If you, if you got lost on the battlefield, if you didn't know which way was east or west, you, you look to find your flag. Mm -hmm. That's why if, if that particular soldier was shot and fell, then another soldier would often, right next to him, would put down his weapon and pick right. up the flag. Right. They, they didn't want the flag to be on the ground. Right. Um, because that was a, a sign that they had been defeated. So it was, it was dishonorable to let the, si the flag fall to the ground. But in this case, you know, they, they were constantly reminded of, of God providing the victory when Moses had his hands lifted up because that, what had happened other times when Moses had lifted up the staff mm. I mean that was when the Red Sea had parted, parted right? that's when many of the plagues and different other types of things had occurred by the, the staff in his hand that they had heard at least the accounts if they didn't witness it themselves of the staff turning into the snake right uh, so I mean this was this was a, a reminder to them. And I, I just want to say this. In, in this case, uh, Moses for the Israelites is very much their intercessor. Right? And so in this case, you can... The book of Hebrews tells us to keep our eyes on Yeshua, the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen. And so here the Israelites are having to keep their eyes on Moses. Right, and and when so when Moses is strong and he's he has his hands up and he here he is there there the, and the people are looking to Moses who's depending on God. They're winning, but when Moses's arms come down. The hearts, of the, it's almost as if the hearts and will to fight of the people come down. And Moses is not being the intercessor he needs to be in that moment. And so Aaron or er, come alongside him mm -hmm. to encourage him to so, be to that intercessor. Him. Because Moses was just a man, mm -hmm. right? He is a messianic figure. He is an intercessor 
for the people, but he's still just a man. He's, he's not um, the word made flesh. <laughs> And so he needs this encouragement and he needs the help of Aaron and her. That's very good. That's very good. But and I was just sitting here thinking, reading that sequence, you know, I used to play in the band and, and things like that, and we'd have our instruments and we'd have to just hold our arms and our hands and our instruments up in front of us. Right. And uh and how tiring our arms, how, how hard that is on your arms to just hold it up. I mean, even just taking a small stone in your hand, it seems pretty light, but if you have to try to hold it out for any length of time, you know, in five minutes, your arm is gonna start wanting to drop, no matter how small the, the stone that you're carrying is, because of that fatigue that sets in. And, and you, in band, you had the conductor, right? Mm-hmm. And you always had to keep your eyes as much as possible on the conductor, right? Mm -hmm. If there's no conductor, what happens to the band? Oh, it falls apart yeah. musically and everything. Yeah. So yeah, you you're always having to put your eyes on the uh, uh, on the drum major, is what he was called back then. But yeah, they had to you had to keep your eyes fixed on that and try to ignore the the pain and the the tiredness yeah. in your arms and all those other kinds of things. Uh, and but here Moses is doing that uh, his hands grow heavy so they took a stone put it under him he sat sat down on it and then he had the assistants those that came alongside him and held him up and that's what provided the direction that's what provided the rally that's what helped Joshua overcome uh, the Amalekites and he's described, you know, as Adonai Nisi, God is my standard, my banner, my miracle, as you had yeah, said yeah. earlier. By the hand upon the throne of Adonai, Adonai will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So it's, it's not wise to come against God's people. No. And so in our generation, we, we're seeing Amalek rise up again. Um, the spirit of Amalek rise up again. And the people have got to keep their eyes on God. Uh, the um, Israeli um, people, the IDF, they are not dependent on the United States. They're not dependent on any other nation or in the UN. They're dependent on God. They have to keep their eyes on God and know that he is the one that fights the battle for them. And I am sure and I am confident and I've heard a few that there are many instances where God has stepped in mm -hmm. and, and in this current battle that they are having. And when, when everything is said and done, I'm sure we will hear about many of them. Um, and, and so, yeah, they, ha they have to keep their eyes on God. We have to keep our eyes on God as we pray for them, mm -hmm. right? We have to keep our eyes on Yeshua, pray for them to have strength in the battle, and pray for them to, to realize who Messiah is. These young men are important. These young men fighting these battles are extremely important. You know, when, when we get to the book of Revelation, we see the 144,000. And right now, we are in the book of Numbers. We're starting the book of Numbers, which is in the beginning of that, He's, God is having uh, Moses and Aaron take a census of the fighting men. Mm -hmm. So who does God count? He counts the fighting men and he counts the Levites. Mm -hmm. Those are the people he counts. And so who are the 144,000? Could they be young men in the IDF? Young fighting men. And so these young fighting men are extremely important. And we need to be praying for them, and we need to be praying that they will keep their eyes on God and, and no and one else, open. and that their commanders will have their eyes on God. Just like Joshua had his eyes on Moses, right? We have to keep our eyes on God. We have to keep our eyes on Yeshua, the author and the perfecter of our faith. He is the one we follow. He is our banner. Yes, he is. 
And we also have to pray for our own nation. Yes. That we would not be filled with the spirit of Amalek. Amen. Because right now, that's in question. Right now, there is a great divide going on in our nation. There is a great divide among our leadership that they are, in many ways, pulling away from support uh, uh, of Israel and the Jewish people. Uh, and so that we are not filled with the spirit of Amalek, that we would side against them and even fight against them. As in, we may not be taking up arms as a nation against Israel right now in open conflict, but we sure are uh, taking the side of their enemies and we don't want more to be and Egypt, more. We don't. Who, who holds out the hope of help and then draws it back. That's what Egypt would do. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want to be Egypt. And so the only thing our nation needs to do is, is simply ask, what do you need? And we're here for you. That's our, that should be our position. That is the godly and biblical position to take is what do you need? And we're here for you. And that's it. Not mm -hmm. to try to tell them what to do because we're not God. Mm -hmm. Their instructions need to come from God. Pray Not our prayer, government. Prayer we don't want listening. to be Egypt. Amen. Pray that they are listening to God. Amen. All right. Amen. Anything else that you wanted to add? That's some pretty powerful stuff. Yes, there I mean, is. we're living in a day where we're seeing this play again, out, play out again. So, and right. he's fighting them on, in our generation. So, so with that, we're going to end this uh, this Omer count, and we will see you again. Uh, in the days ahead, may the Father continue to bless and strengthen all of us. Amen. Amen. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.